The National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the pseudo spuds. Yeah, just a minute. Hello, Johnny. Okay, well, come on in. Nice joint you got here. Eh, for what New York offers, it'll do. How's with you, Silky? Long time no see. Getting by. Who you looking for, Lily? Never met her. Just heard about her. Like to see her. She home? No, she's got one more show to do at the club tonight. Uh, be here in about half an hour. Half an hour, huh? Eh? Yeah, stick around. You know, I could never figure the story on her. What do you mean, Silky? Well, here she has Dirk Martin on the string, biggest gambler in town, fur coats, jewels, anything she wants. And she blows them all for you. What's wrong with that? Oh, look, let's not kid ourselves. You're no big timer. You're just a small time hood liable to get his head blown off any minute. What's a secret, Johnny? I'll show it to you. Wedding ring, huh? That's right, I heard you got married. It's as simple as that, Silky. Too bad Dirk didn't know the secret. Look, Silky, I don't like the way the conversation's going. What's on your mind? I guess you ain't heard, kid. Heard what? I'm working for Dirk Martin now. Working for Martin? I didn't even know you knew him. Didn't you? <laughs> so he's still peeved about Lily. No, no, he ain't peeved, Johnny. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. He just hates your guts. That's why he sent me around. I'm going over, huh? It ain't that simple, Johnny. He wants Lil back. Oh, he does. Well, let him try to get her to leave me. Yeah, uh, Dirk figures she won't. Uh, that's why you're gonna leave her. Permanently. Johnny. Johnny! Car number 14. Car number 14. This is a 3-2 signal. Investigate report of murder. 413 East Houston Street. Car number 14. Car number 14. Investigate report of murder. place uh, can become lonely all of a sudden, can't it? What? I suppose I shouldn't intrude at a time like this, Mrs. Darvell, What do you want? Who are you? A friend, I hope. And I think I want the same thing as you do. Same thing? Johnny's murderer. I heard the flash on the radio the other day. Johnny, do you know who it was? Yes. Who? Tell me, I... Easy, Mrs. Darvell, I can't prove anything. I just know it from the grapevine. Who? What's his name? Can't you guess? Everybody liked Johnny. He didn't... Everybody except Dirk Martin. Dirk. That's the word that's out. Dirk. A gun, Mrs. Darvell? That's hardly the smart thing. Get out of my way. Wait till I close the door. Don't try and stop me, whoever you are. I should have known it was Dirk. Look, I... Mrs. Darvell, my name is Gordon. Silky Gordon. I want to get Martin, too, but not the stupid way. That's why I came here. Now, I think that both of us can work together and be in the clear. If you're trying to stop I'm me... I'm trying to help you. 
How'd you like to take Dirk Martin for a bundle of dough, frame him on a federal wrap that he'll never get out of, and stay in the clear yourself? That's the real way to even things up for your, uh, Johnny. All right, Gordon. Talk. <laughs> Place your bets, all bets down. Am I too late to put a blue chip on number six? No, madam, you can... <laughs> Lily. Hello, Baldy. <laughs> uh, pay 15 on the red. Upset, Baldy? No, glad to see you, Lil, but it's busy. Place your bets, all bets down. Hello, Mrs. Darvell. Anything we can do for you? Dirk Martin. I Eight thought Baldy would push his little button when he saw me. You came promptly enough. I asked if there's anything we could do for you, Mrs. Darvell. Well, you might offer me a drink. Of course, Mrs. Darvell. Let's sit in that end booth. Hey, Mike. One martini dry with olive. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, uh... I heard about Johnny. Too bad. Yeah. Leaves me kind of on the town again. Well, that's one way of putting it. Well, what's the point of this call? Money. Oh? Isn't that kind of blunt, Lily? After all, you gave me the go-by for Johnny. If he didn't leave you fixed, that's too bad. Oh, I'm not asking you for any jerk. I'm offering you a way to make some with me in for a cut. I can use dough right now. Yeah, so I imagine. Well, what's the pitch? What do you think of the war situation? Uh, huh? Making conversation. Well, that came from right field. Well, what do you think of the international situation? Bad, I suppose. Sometimes good, but mostly bad. Why? Uh, depends on how you look at it. That means what? Well, there's one way to look at it that might mean close to a million dollars in cash for us. A million? If you're not above such petty sums, Dirk. You can find out more about it at my apartment tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yeah. Good night. Hey, wait a minute, Lily. Sorry, Dirk. Good night. Mr. Harding, all the heads of our regional counter-spy offices are assembled in the auditorium. How good, Peter. Have arrangements been made to fly them back to their offices as soon as the meeting's over? Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's go. Right. Gentlemen, Mr. Harding. <coughs> Greetings, gentlemen. It's been quite some time since I've seen all our counter-spy regional directors together like this. But I've called you here for briefing and information regarding the grave foreign situation. But first, a bit of good news. Our counter-spy budget has been increased considerably. Enough so that each regional office can have almost twice the number of agents you are now staffed with. This increase has been granted for a definite purpose. The United States wants to make sure that there will be no reputation, repetition of the scrap metal to Japan situation at this particular time. The additional personnel will be used to check all export shipments leaving this country. All suspicious shipments will be reported to this headquarters immediately for further action. That is all, gentlemen. The rest of your instructions are in the mimeograph pamphlet handed to you. Ah, 10 a.m. on the dot, Dirk. You're prompt. Yeah, I'm curious. I was sure you would be. Come in. I want you to meet someone. Meet someone? What do you uh, mean? Relax, Dirk. It's not the law, and it's no one you know. Uh, Lily, if this is a joke... Dirk, I... I'd like you to meet... Well, me. Lily, Lily, is this the fellow you was telling me all about? Hiya, stranger, shake. Shake? Yes, Gordon's the name. G-O-R-Dun, Gordon. <laughs> Little joke of my own, I never have to spell it out. No? Say, that's a mighty good grip you got there. Stand up to any man in Idaho, except me. So what do you want? I uh, hope I didn't hurt you, boy. I got a powerful grip myself. Get it from farming, you know. It strengthens the wrist. Mr. Gordon, would you get me my cigarettes? They're in the kitchen. Why, sure thing, little gal. <laughs> in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I'll be right back. What was that? Like him? A plow jockey. Who likes or doesn't like? Well, I What's thought... What's the that play, you... Lily? 
first you mention the international situation and then a million bucks. Now you spring this hayseed on me. I heard that, boy. Hayseed, is it? Now, look, mister, I like your looks, but I don't allow no man to insult me. Ah, take it easy, Gordon. I didn't insult you. All right, Silky, drop the act. Save it for the paying customer. <laughs> okay, Lily. Look, I got him a little white around the gills. Uh, I thought he thought I was going to take a swing at him. Huh? Hey, what is this, huh? Meet Silky Gordon, <laughs> one of the best con men in the business. Hiya, Martin. I had you going, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Lily, I... Uh... Silky will take over from here. He's got an idea that his act, and your dough will net us a million bucks to split three ways. How? In one word, potatoes. What? Those little things you fry, boil, or mash. And that I grow out on my Idaho farm and supposedly deal in. Potatoes? You mean a million bucks out of spuds? Ah, oh, you're crazy. So is a fox. I've got the whole scheme mapped out on paper. All we need is that old warehouse of yours and $50,000 operating capital. What do you say? Oh, what am I supposed to say? Yes, on what you told me? For 50 grand, I want more information than that. Sure, sure. Take your time. Here's a setup. Read it. Okay. Give me a, a short rundown on it. Potatoes, Martin. Price supported by Uncle Sam. You know this? So? This means the government buys them to keep the market price up to a certain level. Yeah. At present, a dollar and fifty to, oh, a dollar and eighty, a hundred pounds. Yeah, I've heard tell of this. And then they sell them for export at a cent a hundred pounds just to get rid of them. Yeah, keep going. Well, we buy them for that. One cent a hundred pounds, you see. And then sell them right back to the government again at a buck fifty a hundred pounds. Just like that, huh? Yeah, just like that. Simple, isn't it, Dirk? But wait a minute. You said we had to buy them for export to get them at a cent a hundred pounds. That's right. We'll swear that we intend to dehydrate the potatoes. That is, uh, dry them and export. I'm following you. Instead... We'll fill cardboard cartons with sawdust, label them dehydrated potatoes, and ship them to a stooge company in Europe selling the real potatoes back to Uncle Sam at uh, 10 or 12,000 percent profit. Nice. Real nice. Are you in, Dirk? Maybe yes. Now, now, give me a little time. I, I want to read this stuff Gordon gave me and figure the angles. Uh, take a lot of time. Uncle Sam will still have the uh, potatoes to sell. Call me here when you decide, Dirk. I'll be waiting, and I'm sure you'll be calling. Hello? Dirk, Lily. I knew you'd call. Are you in? Yeah. I'm having the boys clean out the warehouse. And uh, what about the $50,000 capital? You'll get it in a couple of days. Oh, that's the way we like to do business, Dirk. And tell Silky to start the ball rolling. And Lily, remember, I'll be watching you all the way. I'm sure you will. Goodbye. Dirk Lil? Yes, Silky. He bit? <laughs> with all his teeth, the rat. Ah, wonderful. When's he coming across with the 50 Gs? In a couple of days. And as soon as we get his dough, we start fitting him for the frame. That's what I'm in this for, Silky. And it better be one he can't break out of. He won't, baby. We'll work the deal just once with 50,000 bags of potatoes. I've got the contacts in Washington, so I can sell that many to the government. What do I do? Now, I've gotten in touch with a logging camp for the sawdust and cartons. You close the deal with them, and then apply for the export license for dehydrated potatoes in Dirk's name. I'm beginning to get the picture. And then, after I've collected from the government... We leave Mr. Dirk Martin holding one big, empty bag. You are listening to the case of the pseudo-spuds on Counter Spy. Tonight on NBC, it's the big show once again over most of these stations. To Lula Bankhead is your MC. And just listen to a few of the stars who will be with you tonight. Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Durante, Perry Como, Jose Ferrer, Mindy Carson, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and a host of other great performers. For an hour and a half of the best in comedy, music, and drama, it's the big show tonight. Another Sunday evening favorite is Theater Guild on the Air. And this week's hour-long Theater Guild production is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, starring Frederick March, Barbara Belgettis, and Hugh Williams. The chimes are your invitation to top Sunday evening listening here on NBC. 
Now, back to Counter Spy. Hello. Well, old Farmer Gordon speaking. Silky, you hear anything yet? I just got an acknowledgement of receipt from the government. They got my shipment of 50,000 bags of fine Idaho potatoes. Well, what about the payment? Well, I'll uh, receive the check in 15 days at my Idaho farm address. Ah, oh, nice going, Silky. Uh, how's your end of the deal? Uh, the sort is going. It's all down at the warehouse in Cartons now. Ready to be the frame around Dirk's neck. We'll put it there as soon as we cash that check from Uncle Sam. So long, Lil. You'll be hearing from me when I need you. New York Counter Spy Section from Export Section Commerce Department. Export license off the shipment dehydrated potatoes at present stored in warehouse at 91241 10th Street. Request routine check and approval your department before granting license. Silky? Right here, Lil. In the warehouse door. Have you got the stuff? Two five-gallon cans. Uh, how about the insurance? I took it out in Dirk Martin's name. No action on the uh, export license yet? Not so far. Well, I was just wondering. Thought they might send someone around to check on the stuff. They only do that at the pier. Let's go in. You sure Dirk won't yell copper? How can he? When we put this place on fire, He's going to have a mighty suspicious insurance company on his hands. He'll probably have to waive the claim, but it'll keep him plenty busy while we make ourselves scarce. All right, let's... Shh. But... What? Listen. Someone... Look. Is... Down that aisle of cartons. A guy. Prying into... Who could be... Customs department, I bet. If he finds out about the sawdust... I know what you mean. Listen, Silky. Yeah. I'll go down and get his attention. You come round the back and jump him. Right. You there. What? What's the meaning of this? Who are you? Oh, excuse me, miss. What are you I'm doing just... in this warehouse? How'd you get in? Are you connected with the firm that owns this place, miss? Yes, I am. And I think it's my place to ask the questions. Or would you rather I call an officer? Well, that won't be necessary. You see, I'm... Now, so he... What? Let go of me. You... Oh, no. No, you don't. You're nice, Silky. You're nice. Oh! Brother, he was plenty tough. Is he? Yeah, dead. Who is he? Wait. I'll look through his pockets. Uh oh. What? United States counter spy. This ain't good, Lil. It's wonderful. Perfect. Dirk can take the rap for this, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll get the kerosene cans. And spill it all around, Silky. Don't worry. When we put a match to this place, we want to make sure the whole thing goes up. Operator. Operator, get me the fire department, quick. There's a fire in the warehouse at 10th and Front Street. This is the watchman on the pier across the way. You'd better get here quick. It's blazing. It's going up. The whole place is going up. Now. Attention, Mr. Harding, Counter Spy Headquarters. Attention, Mr. Harding, Counter Spy Headquarters. This is an emergency 3 2 flash. Peters, grab your hat and come on. The plane's waiting. Where are we going? New York. Warehouse fire. Explosion of export shipment. Where do I catch up there? Sabotage? I don't know. All I've got is the warehouse address and the nature of the shipment. Dehydrated potatoes. Potatoes? Supposed to be. The counter spy agent was examining the shipment at the time of the fire and explosion. There's no news of him yet. 
Now, when we land, Peters, you follow up on the material I'll give you. I'm going right to our New York laboratory and see what they've got. Over this way, Mr. Harding, to our electric furnace. Right with you, Colonel. What's this set up for? Well, that cardboard carton in the electric furnace, it's one that was salvaged from a bit of a warehouse fire. Contains munitions of some type, doesn't it? No, sir. But the explosion... Watch, Mr. Harding. I'll switch the furnace on. What's the point? Now, just what? a moment, sir. I had the furnace on before you arrived. It'll be up the right temperature in a few seconds. What? There, that's what I wanted you to see. What kind of explosive is it? It isn't, sir. That cardboard box that just blew apart contained ordinary sawdust packed in tightly. Sawdust? That's right, sir. Sawdust packed tight and under intense heat generates its own explosive power. With the right conditions, it's just as dangerous as dynamite. Not dehydrated potatoes or munitions. No, sir. But there's something crooked about the whole setup. Our agent... Yeah? Well, the autopsy shows he wasn't killed by the fire. He was murdered. Knife wounds. Murdered. What about the sawdust? Have you analyzed it yet? Yes, sir. We put it through the spectrograph, did a microchemical analysis on it. The reports are over here. Ordinary pine sawdust. That's right. The pitch content indicates southern pine. And from the cellular structure of the wood, we place it as coming from somewhere in Georgia or the Carolinas. Oh. The moisture content indicates it's been freshly cut from logs instead of dried and cured wood. That means that the stuff came from a logging camp, not a lumberyard. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Crandall. If anything else comes up, I'll be in the communications room. To all field officers, Southern Regional District, United States Counter Spies, request immediate check of all logging camps in your field area. Ascertain methods of disposal and sale of sawdust. Check thoroughly and report to me on any new purchasers of item. Give this top priority. Hello, Chief. Peters, where have you been? Checking on the ownership of that warehouse and the potato shipment. Any difficulty? A lot less than I expected. The warehouse is owned by a set of dummy corporations set up to hide the real owner, one Dirk Martin. The gambler? That's right. And that shipment of potatoes was bought and supposedly dehydrated by the same Mr. Martin. Oh, hidden ownership again. Right, Dave, but not very cleverly done. Hey, wait, hold it a second, please. Hello? Tackett from the Atlanta field office? Okay, put him on. Hello, Tackett. Yes, that's right, the sawdust. Oh, you did? Good. Who bought it? No, no, that company name isn't familiar. Did you find out who owns and runs it? Good, who? What? You're sure? Okay, Tackett, nice job. Goodbye. What is it, Dave? Peters, you knew about the sawdust in the explosion. Yes, Crandall told me. Oh, that too points the finger at Dirk Martin. He bought it. Martin? Yes. It doesn't wash, Chief. We know Martin's record. He's a real cozy bird. He doesn't leave loose ends around this way. Three big neon-lighted arrows pointing right at him. Dave, I may be wrong, but this shapes up like a great big frame. I know it does, Peters, and I think we'll call on Dirk Martin right away and see if we can find the picture that fits the frame. Silky, get that. I've got to finish packing. Pretty insistent, whoever it is. Well, open the door. That's the only way we can leave anyway. I don't like it, Lil. You open it. I'll cover you from behind the door. Jerk. That's right, baby. Inside. The idea, sir. You tell me what the idea is. My boy's got word to me the warehouse is on fire. Burn down. No kidding, sir. Do I look like I'm kidding? But that's wonderful, a break for all of us. Now we're completely covered. The fire will hide everything. <laughs> There's one phony shipment of sawdust we won't have to make. Was it phony? What do you mean? You said sawdust, and the place blew up completely. 
Maybe you were trying to use me as a front for some other kind of shipment, eh? Don't be crazy, jerk. And maybe you know something about the body they found in the fire. Body? Yeah. Look, baby, you'd better start talking. Or I'm going to have to slap a lot of words out of you. I wouldn't, Dirk. Uh, I had you covered from the minute you entered. So, so I was right. A big double cross. That's right, Dirk. But you caught on a little too fast. What do we do with him, Lou? Guess there's only one thing we can do. Same treatment like the guy in the warehouse? So you did start that fire? That's right, Dirk. We had it all framed nicely. You'd have to stand still for an arson wrap and keep quiet about us or you'd get a bigger jolt for swindling. They might even have pinned that guy's death on you. That's one way you would have pay paid for killing Johnny. Johnny? Are you nuts? Tell him, Silky. Tell him what you told me about how he killed Johnny. Me kill Johnny? Yes, you wanted me back. It was the only way you figured I'd come. Look, Lily, there isn't a quail in the world I'd risk a murder rap for. I didn't shoot your Johnny boy. Silky, you said Shouldn't that... Shouldn't believe everything I say, Lil. I needed you to pull this racket on Dirk. Getting you through Johnny was the fastest way. You killed him. That's right, baby. And it looks like the same deal for you and Dirk Martin, so there'll be no more talking. Martin has already talked. What? Oh, it... United States counter spies. Why, you stinking hey, look out, Martin. Martin. He's out of action, Chief. You'd better not try the same move, Mrs. Darvell. So Dirk Martin's a stoolie. You bet I am, baby, when it comes to standing still for a murder. Did I... he tell you everything? Did he tell you about the deal? That... He did, Mrs. Darvell, all about your big swindle, stealing money from the government at the expense of our fighting men. At a time when we need every dollar for defense, and he's going to stand trial for it. But uh, not for murder, baby. You can take that one alone. All right, Peter, take them both out of here. Tune in every week, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next week for the exciting case of the hideous hijacker. When medical supplies, sorely needed by our fighting men and allies in Asia, were hijacked, the counter-spy organization was put on a double alert. By getting information from a dead man, firing bullets into sawdust, and putting cardboard under a strange light, your counter-spies uncovered a kettle of fish that was 15,000 miles long. Be sure to listen next week to The Case of the Hideous Hijacker on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Palmer Thompson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, Lionel Rico speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production. <laughs> Three chimes mean good times on NBC.